All right, so I thought I would give an example of how you can use a residual plot to um, determine an appropriate model for some data. So I actually use the spreadsheet program here in GeoGebra to generate a bunch of random numbers, um, which then got uh, plugged into a particular formula, which I'm keeping hidden for the moment. But these are the end results, and I actually made 50 of them. I just kind of did the formula and I dragged down. So I'm going to treat these as an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. And let's take a look and see what we got here. See, I'm just going to hide all the data right there. So this right here is the numbers being plotted. Um, it looks like I actually reversed it. It looks like I have my x is column D and my uh, y is column A. But that's OK. It'll still serve the same purpose. So uh, here's the scatter plot. So let's suppose we think, oh, I'll, I think this is a straight line. So we can go ahead and go to the model over here and choose linear. And OK, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but the real way to check, uh, it, it looks like there are some bad things going on, like there's a little curvature going on right here. But let's actually look at the residual plot. So I'm going to come up over here, change to residual plot. And I think you can clearly see there's a pattern here. So whenever you see a pattern to the residuals, any kind of pattern at all, then that means that um, that particular model that you're doing is not a good fit for the actual underlying relationship of the data. So here I chose a linear model, and I'm looking at the residual plot. And there's a definite pattern there. So um, that means if I go back to the scatter plot, that the underlying relationship between the data in column A and column D is probably not linear. Um, because when you did the residual plot, if you notice that, oh, over here, the residuals were all negative, and then they changed to be positive, and they changed to be negative again. So the growth rate wasn't quite right for this actual data. So let's try something else other than linear. Let's see, our next option is to do a log. OK, clearly this is bad. <laughs> um, uh, we can tell. The, it tries to find the, the logarithm graph of best fit, and here it is. Um, but we can see that even when we try to find the best one, um, that here the residuals are too high, here they're low, here they're high because the points are up. So you're going to have a pattern here. Let's look at the residual plot. This is the residual plot. So you can see there's a pattern to these points. So that means that whatever the relationship is per our data, it's probably not logarithmic. So let's go to something else. Let's try polynomial. Now, actually, let me go back to the scatter plot for a bit because this one's interesting. When you go to a polynomial, that one actually looks reasonable. It's going through a lot of the points, and it's trying to match. If I look, it looks like it's an upside-down parabola here. I see a quadratic with a negative coefficient in front of the x squared term. So it's thinking, OK, that one doesn't look too bad if you just eyeball it. But now let's look at the residuals. Oops, over here, I click back over here, change the residual plot. Boom. All right, now there clearly is a pattern. Right? It looks like some sort of cubic pattern or something like that. Now, don't be misled. Just because the graph of the residuals looks like a cubic doesn't mean that, oh, it was a cubic curve for the polynomial, or the graph is really a cubic, not a quadratic. It doesn't actually mean that. Okay? What it's just saying is that the, the polynomial that it chose, which in fact was a quadratic, was not a good fit for the data, because there was a pattern here, clear pattern of the residuals. All right, let's try something else. Let's try a power function. Actually, uh, I'm going to skip power for a minute and go to exponential. <laughs> um, the reason I'm going to skip because I think I know what the real one is, if I remember correctly. So if we try exponential, OK, just eyeballing it doesn't look like it's a good fit. What we really should do is look at the residuals. OK, again, pattern of the residuals, kind of following this curve. What you really want to have is sort of a random dusting, a random cloud of points, sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes big, sometimes small. If you see that, then that's the key that, OK, I think I actually have the, the correct model. So all right, so exponential's got a, another kind of pattern to it. So let's actually try polynomial. Oops, not polynomial. Sorry, I meant power. That polynomial actually didn't, it tries to find a quadratic, and it turns out it's not so good. All right, this is a power model. So notice, uh, sometimes big numbers, sometimes small numbers, kind of you know, going up and down all over the place. It's just sort of a random cloud of points. So therefore, this power model is actually the one that we're looking for. So I'm going to go back to the actual scatter because of the residual plot. Go to the scatter plot, 
And you can eyeball and you can see it actually matches pretty well. It's not perfect. It's not like all the residuals are zero or anything like that. But it's like sometimes it's too high, sometimes it's too, too low. It's actually the appropriate growth rate. So the, you know, it's reasonable to uh, presume that the underlying relationship between those two columns of data that we're showing is in fact a power relationship. And this is the power curve of best fit.